We've had another intense week of AI releases, ranging all the way from Anthropic releasing an LLM that can remote control a computer. We have some use cases of that in today's video and various creative applications that we didn't even know were possible before. As you can see, I'm still on the road here. I'm in Guriu, Brazil, where the wind is absolutely insane. And I've been using Starlink to upload these video clips to my video editors, which sit in Europe and Asia respectively. So here we go, a truly global episode of AI news that you can use featuring all the AI releases of this week that you can actually put to work today. Okay, so this update made a lot of users very happy because advanced voice mode finally shipped to all European users, including Switzerland, Iceland, Norway, and Liechtenstein. So now everybody has access to advanced voice. Check out another video on the channel for 20 plus use cases that you can put to work today with it. There's a lot you can do today, including the universal translator. Next up, we have 11 labs coming out with an update, and this is easily summarized as prompt to any voice you can imagine. You can find this in their web app under voices, and then if you go to add new voice, the very first option is voice design now. And voice design lets you design an entirely new voice from a text prompt. Let's give it a shot, shall we? Maybe randomize a few times. How about an angry old pirate, loud and boisterous, okay? But let's add a little bit of a personal touch here. How about this? <laughs> okay, you think you can cross Captain Match Caramel Latte and live to share the Insta post? Okay, so this is a pirate with a valley girl accent. Why are you so rude, man? Just stop doing that. I can't help it, this is my voice. Let's see if I can actually pull this off. I imagine this would be quite challenging. Let's have a look. I face storms that would turn your bougie hair white and sea monsters that would make your knees like totally shake. I face storms that would turn your bougie. I face storms that would turn your bougie hair white. Whoa, okay, interesting. I don't know. I feel like doing one more. How about a massive evil ogre troll with a pirate accent? Let's generate. Your weapons are but toothpicks to me. Surrender now, and I may grant you a swift end. Your weapons are but toothpicks to me. Surrender now, and I may. Your weapons are but toothpicks to me. Okay, granted, these were super tricky. Let's give it one more that is quite simple. Let's do this movie trailer voice preset that they have in here. In a world on the brink of chaos, one hero will rise. In a world on the brink of chaos, one hero will rise. Prepare yourself for a story of epic proportions coming in a world on the brink of chaos. Now that's pretty good. At this pace, we'll soon have text to literally everything. We have some updates from Canva with all of their AI features upgraded even further. They're calling this Droptober and throughout October, they're releasing a bunch of features and you can check out all of them in the link in the description below. I'm gonna highlight one that I find particularly interesting because minor improvements to a writing tool, which is essentially a chat GPT wrapper is not something I I consider worth featuring but they have this brand new whiteboard plus ai feature and i always thought that all of these whiteboard and mind mapping type features work really well with ai so what i'm gonna do is open up canva here and just click on one of these whiteboard presets how about the swot analysis that looks good to me and as you can see there's a lot here okay there's different layouts and you can fill all of these out zoom in and out this is nothing revolutionary but if i went ahead and used all of this and not just used i could also collaborate in here right i can add other users and we could all work on this collaborative SWOT analysis. Here's the new thing. You can go ahead and select everything. And now you should be able to say magic, right? Create summary. And you will summarize everything on this whiteboard with the power of AI. And I think that's just pretty amazing. Look at this. Obviously, there's no info in here, so this content will be useless. But I just thought it was an interesting workflow to have a collaborative visual workspace like this where multiple people can contribute and then you can use AI on top of that as a final step or as an addition, not as a core feature. And the summary you could send to whomever might care about the results of it, but not about the intricate details of the process as you were developing this. SWOT analysis, mind maps, site maps. Heck, you could have entire business plans in here and then just summarize it with AI in the end. And for many visual learners, this might be a better way to lay out things than simply going ahead and throwing everything into a Word document. And as you can see, there's a lot of these whiteboards, so you could do customer journeys too. And also there's a whole lot more AI features. So if I just select all of this, we can do all of these presets or even a custom prompt on top of the visual elements. Pretty interesting. And if you want to check out some of the other features, there's a lot of minor features here that relate to both AI and design. So this is actually absolutely massive news you can use. You might have heard that Claude released a brand new set of models, the Sonnet 3.5 new and the Haiku 3.5 is coming. And also they have their brand new computer use API. But as you might know, I created a separate video on the channel going into all the details and showing you where you can access this even as a non-technical person. So if you want to see all that, you can check out the dedicated video. But what I have for you here is the first use cases that have been popping up. And as promised, we'll do a dedicated video on this, exploring all of them and not just showing you what we found while researching this, but also what all of the internet has 
has been doing with this brand new feature that is essentially a LLM that remote controls your computer. So here's a few wild examples. One of them would be this prompt. Go to YouTube, find the video and skip all the ads. And then look at it doing it. It full screens the video, it finds a skip button, it presses it, and then you can get rickrolled without ads stopping you. Okay, but admittedly, that's not very useful. How about this one where it goes ahead and fills out different job applications for you? All with a simple prompt that says, first scrape anthropic.com with Firecrawl, next scrape to their career pages with Firecrawl and find a job. Navigate to the job page using Firefox and click the apply now button until you see a form. Then find the why do you want to work at Anthropic text box and enter a great answer into the form box based on the scrape. And look at it, going to the correct page and applying to the job and using an LLM to fill out this field. And you can imagine that if you give it extra context in form of your CV, it could take all the info and fill out all the fields for you, send it, and then you could use a prompt generator to generate variations of this prompt with different websites where you can apply to different jobs. And then this thing would just go ahead and apply to different jobs for you all day long with your CV and custom answers. And this is where the power of prompting comes from because if you prompt it really well, it's even gonna sound like you. It's gonna have all the context on you. It's gonna know which pages to go to. And now all of the prompt generators that I've been teaching you for a while now with the various products, I mean, since over a year in the freebie you get with our newsletters, you get 10 prompt generators. Well, now you could go ahead and repurpose those to create different anthropic computer use prompts. And then this damn thing goes out and does the work for you. Where are all the people claiming that prompt engineering will be completely useless in 2020? 24. Where? Where? It's not 2030 yet. You need to know how to communicate with these AIs to get things done today. This is super, super interesting to me. I'll be playing around more with it and reporting back in a dedicated video just focused on various use cases of how to put this to work. Next up, we have X releasing their Grok API. If you're not familiar, this is Twitter slash X's large language model that has access to all the Twitter data. That is its main advantage. But to be honest, I don't know many people that actually use it regularly. If you do, please leave a comment below. Mostly the story of this AI has been that they're catching up to the other players in the game. They do have the unique data but just the quality of the outputs and the tooling around it haven't been there yet. But now they have an API, meaning you can build this into various applications and pay per use. And people are trying things out of it, like Daniel San over here uses it to generate code inside of VS Code. Now, why would you use Grok Beta over Sonnet 3.5? That is state of the art at code generation, especially with the new updates this week. I'm not exactly sure, but you can do it. But then this use case might be a bit more interesting. XI actually put on a hackathon, and so he'll here built a Chrome extension that allows you to bring your own Twitter algorithm to websites and it filters it using Grok. And they're using this on X, allowing you to effectively modify the algo on your own Twitter feed with this extension. It checks out the different posts and adjusts them based on the topics that you picked in your preset. I mean, this is interesting, but it should also be possible with other APIs. I guess the advantage that you have here is that this does have all the Twitter data. So it probably makes most sense to use it to moderate Twitter posts. Not exactly sure, but nevertheless, XAI is catching up. There's an API now, you can use it. And now let's move on to the next story, which is Runaway Act one. And this is one that might not be available yet for you. They claim that they started rolling this out. I don't know a single person who has this yet, but this thing is super fascinating. In a nutshell, this is essentially motion capture without the crazy device. You're probably familiar with some behind the scenes footage of how Hollywood movies are made, especially in the VFX department. They wear these green suits or these suits with all of these different tracking points or tracking devices on a person so that when he moves around, they can map characters on top of them perfectly. Now, Runway is the first player in the AI video game to release a feature that is trying to mimic this without all of the technology and all of the extra equipment to track something. Here, all you need is an actor performing a certain expression or moving ahead in a certain way, and then... So let me get this straight. You came all the way down to the Department of Motor Vehicles and didn't bring your driver's license? Do I understand that correctly? You're going to have to go in the uh, separate line. Isn't that amazing? I mean, look at this. There's a bunch of examples on this release page. And again, they're claiming that they're slowly releasing this. But in all of these demos, this looks absolutely incredible. And this is something we haven't seen before. Now, we had an interesting discussion with the team about what's next with this. And obviously, what's next is, well, the avatar will be you. And then somebody else can reenact you as you speak. So I don't know, this could be AI Igor and somebody completely else could be sitting here presenting. And then I could just map my avatar on top of it, use my level. Level Labs voice to actually reproduce the voice. I mean, heck, if you check out Eleven Labs, they do have the voice changer where I can pick Igor AI advantage and then somebody could record audio 
and it just gets reproduced in my voice. With this tech doing the video, it's about to get crazy. I might even be able to take a week off for the first time in years because somebody else will be presenting news you can use. And all of the AI tech will do the makeup of the voice and the avatar. Now, is this actually good? Hmm, I don't know. I guess it depends on the use case. I personally think there's value to this human touch of the interaction that we're having right now. But this certainly opens up some new opportunities that most people haven't thought of so far. And I personally can't wait to try this myself once I get access. Okay, when it comes to image generation, there's a bunch of new releases this week, starting with Midjourney actually announcing something, but this is only available to an exclusive set of users. It's new image editing features, and they're only accessible to people who are subscribed for on the yearly membership, subscribed for the past 12 months, or have at least 10,000 images. My account actually does not fall in this category because I started using other tools next to Midjourney. And I gotta admit, I canceled my sub around two months ago, as I mostly go to Flux these days if I need something. But essentially, they're adding some of these editing features that we've seen in Photoshop a while ago. And that's pretty much the story here, bringing me to the next release of this week, which is Ideogram Canvas Magic Fill and Extend. This is very similar to Midjourney's release. They're adding these in and out painting features, which allow you to modify only parts of the image or areas outside of the image. But let me tell you, all of these features that you see here in both Ideogram and Midjourney are things that we've had in Photoshop for a while. And essentially, they're features that you could do manually if you knew how to Photoshop properly before. This is just ease of use being enabled by artificial intelligence. And what we're seeing this week is some of these feature and trickling down from the pro level apps like Photoshop into something like Ideogram or Midjourney, making it accessible to most consumers. So if you could benefit from something like extending an image into something wider or replacing a specific object in an image, well, this week we got multiple alternatives on how you can easily do that in the apps that you might already be using. Next up, we have Stability AI releasing Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large. Now, rather than me telling you about this, let me just show you. Because me and the team actually went ahead and created this new Excel sheet that compares all the major image generators on a few prompts that we deemed to be quite useful. Book covers, portrait photography, logo design, and some specialty techniques that we like. As you can see, you have the comparison of all the different models here, ranging from Midjourney 6.1 across Flux 1.1 Pro, but also Ideogram 2.0. And what I did here is I took some of these prompts and I also ran them through Stable Diffusion 3.5 so we can compare the quality levels of this versus some of the other top tier image generators. And by top tier, I mean we have this monthly ranking that we freely publish. We update it once a month, so you can stay up to date on what tools are the best, in our opinion. Link below. But now let's have a look at what Stable Diffusion 3.5 produces for some of these images. First up, we have this portrait photography prompt. So right away, I just noticed that these eyes are a bit off. They just don't look very real, especially when you compare it to something like Midjourney or Flux. I mean, this is just not on the same level. Fair enough, that's one image. Let's not judge too quickly. How about this logo? Okay, really? This is what it comes up with versus these results in Midjourney, Flux... Kind of a magic studio didn't get the text right, but it's a little more detailed. And I actually really like these ones from Ideogram versus, again, this. Okay, that's not good. Let's give it one more chance. How about the cinematic still prompt? This is a technique that we originally saw from Tim from Theoretically Media. And Matthias then runs the events in our community, absolutely loves this. He uses it all the time and it produces stunning results across all generators. Arguably, Leonardo does the worst, but I suppose it's okay. Flux and Majority are super impressive here. The other ones are okay. And this is what I got from SD 3.5. This is terrible. This person doesn't even look like a person. Come on, this is DALI 2 level humans. So I don't know, am I missing something here? This release is just very underwhelming. One thing that I should warn you about is that it is quite uncensored. So if you go in here, sometimes you will just get graphic images without a warning. So you can generate all sorts of uncensored stuff here. But other than that, not sure why one would use this over Flux. All right, the next up in AI video generators, we have two new releases, one of them fully open source, and another one is version 2.0 of Hyper. We went ahead and tested these two for you. So here are the results from the fully open source Mochi 1 release. This is the open source video generator by Genmo. We compare them to the Meta Movie Gen prompts, as Meta Movie Gen seems to be the best thing we have seen so far. Maybe next is Sora. Ah, well, not bad on this ghost prompt. This is a tricky one. Next up, we have this monkey prompt. Again, we'll put up a comparison on screen so you can see the difference between Meta Movie Gen and this, but this is surprisingly good. Physics look realistic. It handles the fog well. The consistency on this monkey is super good. Eyes look realistic. I mean, it's a bit of a ridiculous scene, but I don't think there's anything obviously bad about this. And next up, we have two more shots of a sloth chilling in a floaty. I don't know, there's something about this one that is extra fun and it sort of works. There's not a lot of movement, it's quite subtle, but the shadows, the water, the sloth with the glasses, it all looks good. Now we did generate this one more time and this generation looks absolutely terrible. So I also wanted to include this in here. I mean, this looks like something I would have made inside of Photoshop when I was 15. Uh, that's when I was learning Photoshop, by the way. This is just not good, but fair enough. It just re the prompt and all of a sudden it was great. 
great. So there you go, Mochi, really impressive. And this thing is available under an Apache 2 license, meaning you can use this for commercial purposes in your own projects. That's pretty amazing at this quality level. And then we also have the Hyper 2.0 release. And Hyper 1.0 was actually the model that we were surprised by how good it was. And they have a 2.0 model. So let's have a look. This one, we ran through some of the image to video prompts. We compare it with, you might be familiar with these and the results are surprisingly good, even better than Hyper 1.0. Is it quite as good as Minimax? Probably not, especially when it comes to something like these animated characters. <laughs> I mean, this is just not it. Minimax did it perfectly. But these balloon animations might be some of the best we have actually seen in this category. And the car is okay. And this abstract man underwater is also okay. 3D object is actually really cool and abstract. So my verdict here would be for animated 3D objects or vectors, this is really fantastic. Something like animated characters or humans, less so. Okay, next up, I wanna quickly show you an update from Google Photos that actually shipped over the past weeks, but now it's becoming publicly available. And it's the ability to search across your entire photo library. So team member Daniel actually went in and tried this out on his own Android phone. And if he types in something like, show me photos with soccer, it does that and it looks for the entire library and you don't need to look for a specific date, location, none of that, it just recognizes soccer and bundles all of the pictures into one album for you. You could also do this on specific people and even video clips. Now this is pretty amazing and not all Google Photos users have this yet. Daniel pre-applied to this and now got access but expect this to come to your Android phone soon and these are just the quality of life improvements that AI can bring to these consumer apps and I just wanted to show you as they happen. And that's really everything for this week. If you enjoyed this subscribe to the channel. I do this every single Friday. I haven't missed upload since almost a year. It's gonna be the news you can use anniversary very soon. Here's another video you might enjoy. And for me, it's time to pack all of this up and move to the next hotel.